Hi, my name is Kristen Zero. I'm a trainer for the ERP project, and I'm going to show you how to register for classes. What I'm going to show you today is how to search for classes, validate the classes in your shopping cart, edit your shopping cart, and enroll in classes. Now before I can show you how to register for classes, first of all I have to show you how to search for them in order to get them in your shopping cart. So first of all you're going to log into your student center in the student information system. I'm logged in today as a sample student who is an undergrad and who needs to enroll in an upcoming semester. He already has one class that he's registered for and now he needs a few more. First thing he has to do is get to his enrollment shopping cart. There's a lot of ways to do that. I'm going to show you how to get there by taking the enrollment shopping cart link. When I click on that, I go to Bobby's shopping cart. And as you can see here, he's already put two classes in his shopping cart. Just because they're in his shopping cart does not mean he's enrolled in them. They're just in waiting. Down at the bottom of the screen, we have his fall 2008 class schedule as it currently exists. Now to search for classes, he has a couple options. I'm going to show you one today. The first is just a straight class search. I would have my little green dot in class search and click search to get to a search screen. I can also search by Bobby's requirements. I would put my little green dot right here, click search, and then it would take me to a version of Bobby's academic requirements report and he would look through that to see what courses he needs to take. There's also search by My Planner. So if I click on that and click search, it takes me to the My Planner functionality, which is an optional function that students can use in the Student Center. And if you're a graduate student, you use that to hold your planned program of study. And that would allow me to pick classes out of Bobby's planner so he could enroll in those. So I'm going to show you straight old class search. I'm going to click in my class search radio button, which is the default, and click the search button and it takes me to this screen which you've probably seen before. I can search by my subject, course number, I can search within my career, I could also look for distinct meeting times or days of the week, I can search by instructor as well. I'm just going to go ahead and search for History 112 which is a class that Bobby needs. If I didn't know the history abbreviation, I can cl click select subject, but since I, since I know it, I'm just going to type it in and I'm also going to put in my course number that I want, which is 112. And then I could hit enter or the search button. And here are my search results. Here's History 112. It has a couple different sections. Um, Bobby needs to enroll in a lecture section. So he would look through this and decide upon which lecture he wants. He knows if it's a lecture because it says LEC in the section link. So there's one, and these are all discussions. So I'm going to click on select class here. And when I click on this class in particular, because this History 112 also has discussion sections, I have to select a discussion section for Bobby. Now, if I was enrolling in a lecture that was by itself just a lecture, I wouldn't have to go through this step. If I'm registering for a class with a laboratory or recitation, I would definitely see this step again. So now I'm going to select a discussion section for Bobby. I'm going to go with this Friday 113 section, and then I'm going to click the Next button. That gives me a confirmation screen. It tells me that I'm registering for uh, History 112, Section 100, and Section 113. They're both open. If they were closed to enrollment, I'd have a blue box that said closed. It's worth three credit hours, and um, here is the grid of what I'm registering for, the days and times, and the rooms and instructors. If I want to not register for this class and put it in my shopping cart, I click Cancel. I'm going to click Next because Bobby wants this class. So now, as you can see, History 112 has been added to the shopping cart. And so now I have History 112, Section 113 here, and Section 100. I also have the Chemistry and Math classes that Bobby has already placed in his shopping cart. Again, Bobby is not enrolled for these classes yet. He's only enrolled in what appears in his Fall 2008 schedule. 
Before Bobby enrolls, he's going to want to validate the classes in his shopping cart. Validation is a really nice tool that helps students to know what needs they have to get into a class before they go through the process of registering for them. So I'm going to go ahead and click in the chemistry select box and the history. This is going to check for both history 112 section 113 and 100 and also the math course and then I'm going to click validate. And what that does is it checks for conflicts and any errors that Bobby might have in his schedule. And here's what we have. We have Chemistry 105, it says OK to add. I get my little green check mark. Now Math 201, it has a message for me. Enrollment requisites are not met. You have not satisfied the enrollment requirements for this class at this time. Click the class link on the shopping cart page to view the enrollment requirements. So there's a prerequisite for Math 201 that Bobby has not fulfilled yet. So I get the nice big red X to let him know that is not OK to add at this time. History 112 is also OK to add. Now to go back to my shopping cart, I just hit the nice big shopping cart button and go back to my shopping cart. So Bobby knows that he can't register for Math 201 right now because of a prerequisite. But what prerequisite? If, if you click on the link for the class, it will tell you exactly what is missing. In this case, Math 201, Intro to Linear Algebra, the prerequisite for this class is Math 122 or 124 or 126. So apparently, Bobby has not taken any of those courses. So now we're back to the shopping cart. Bobby probably wants to remove Math 201 because he can't really enroll for it. So I'm going to click in this checkbox right here and click Delete. And now it's gone out of Bobby's shopping cart. So he can go ahead and enroll for the rest of his classes. So what I'm going to do next is take you to the enroll link. You might notice that you can enroll from this screen. I'm just going to show you another way that you can do that. Up at the top of your page is the enroll tab. I'm going to click on that and what you're going to see is the add sub tab and basically the same shopping cart you saw before. This time though there's no validate button or delete button. To delete a class out of your shopping cart, you click the garbage can. And to proceed with registra registration, you would click proceed to step two of, th two of three. Now just a few things I want to caution you of before you go ahead and register. There are a few things that you need to take care of before you can register for classes. First of all, you have to meet with your advisor so that he or she can remove your advising hold. Students get an advising hold so that you talk to your instructor before you select your classes. Your advisor has to remove that for you. You also need to check your enrollment appointment time. All students have enrollment appointment dates. That's the date that they can start enrolling and they can continue enrolling after that date. Um, you can only start enrolling as of your enrollment appointment date. So if that hasn't arrived, you're going to be told no by the SIS. Your shopping cart can be filled prior to your hold being released and prior to your enrollment appro appointment arriving. So you can take care of all that work before any of those days arrive and you'll be all ready to go when your registration can begin. Okay, so let's register Bobby for these classes. All I have to do now is click proceed to step two of three. <coughs> I get a confirmation screen. It's asking me to confirm the classes. So Bobby's going to want to look at the descriptions of the courses and the days and times, the rooms and instructors, and make sure this is really what he wants. When I click Finish Enrolling, the SIS starts to check for Bobby's enrollment. And if everything's good, and in this case it is, it'll tell you you have a successful enrollment. So for both of these classes that I chose for Bobby, it says, this class has been added to your schedule. At this point, you can go back and add another class, or you can go to my class schedule. I'm going to show you that now. And this is where Bobby can get a copy of his schedule if he wants. He can um, print that out tack it to his door so he knows where he's going 
and when. So Bobby is now registered for classes. Obviously he didn't have a hold on his account and also he'd met his appointment time. Now there are a few other things you can do in the SIS regarding your registration. I'm not going to show you how to do them but I want to point them out to you. First of all, you can go back to the ad screen at any time while you are still open for enrollment. That's before the end of the drop ad period and add more courses here. As you can see, Bobby's shopping cart is empty now because I enrolled him in all of his classes and here's his schedule. There's also the drop screen. You can use this through the end of drop ad unless you need permission to drop out of a course from a professor. So here are all the courses that Bobby can potentially drop. Students also have the ability to swap classes. Swap is a really new feature that students here at Case haven't had before the advent of the SIS. You can actually swap a class out for another class. And what this allows you to do is drop a class from your schedule and at the same time add a class to replace that. You can only add that class if the first class can be dropped and vice versa. You can only drop the class if the first class, the other class can be added. So this is a real nice feature. You can also edit some courses when you click on the edit sub tab. If you have a course such as Bobby has, History 112, that has two different class sections in it that comprise the single class, you can go to the edit and what Bobby can do here is actually change the uh, discussion section that he had chosen. So if I click on History 112, and this only gives me the options of the classes that are editable, and cl click Proceed to Step 2 of 3, what I can do here is change Bobby's uh, discussion section. Okay, lastly I want to show you the permission screen. If you need a permit to get into a class from an instructor, then the permit will show up on this screen. Bobby did not need any permit, so nothing is here. But sometimes you need an instructor's permission to get into his or her class. And when you do, you ask them for a permit to get into the class. When you've been granted it, it will show up right here. So that's the registration process. I want to remind you that if something happens and you can't register, there's a few reasons that that could be happening. Number one, maybe you have a hold on your account. Maybe it's a registration advising hold or a past due balance hold. You can check that on the Student Center by going to that front page and looking in the holds box. And as you can see here, Bobby has no holds. Another thing you want to check is the enrollment appointment, and that would be visible right here in the enrollment dates box. You also want to make sure that you've met any prerequisites that are required to get into a course, and also if a class is closed, then you won't be able to get into that. You can request a permit from a professor in order to get into a closed class. Lastly, maybe the course isn't in your career. If you're an undergraduate student trying to enroll in a graduate course, SIS won't let you do that automatically. You'll have to ask for permission to do that from the appropriate dean or registrar. That's all I have to show you today. If you need additional documentation on registering for classes, you can go to www.case.edu slash project slash ERP. We have manuals, guides, documentation, and this video. You can also email registrar at case.edu if you have questions about your enrollment or problems. Thank you for watching.